Hello and welcome to Science Unscripted. It's Connor here. Okay. I think most of our listeners are aware of the fact that having a bias is not a good thing necessarily. Mm -hmm. A bias means that for reasons often you yourself don't even understand or you're not aware of, you are in understanding information incorrectly because of like your default setting somehow or just pre Yeah, or something you picked up along the way. Yeah, as well. It could be yeah. yeah, it could be something learned. I'll give you three quick examples. I think most of you are familiar with these. Confirmation bias. This is where any piece of information that we come across that confirms that we were right all along about something. I knew that. Yeah. We love that information. I knew that. If it proves you're wrong, there are some people I'm I'm I, I like to think I get pleasantly surprised when it's you know, when it's like, wait, that's not what I expected. I was totally wrong. Most of us have confirmation biases, plural. There's also recency bias. If you ask people what were the, what have been the best, the top 10 movies since the year 2000, they're going to list a lot more from like the last five years than yeah. the first, those other 20. You should have seen this hockey game I was watching last night. It was the best game <laughs> ever I've ever yeah, seen exactly. in my <laughs> life. <laughs> and one last example is the anchoring bias. This is when the first piece of information ends up having too much weight. It just sticks there like an anchor. So Gabe, if you and I are, if I'm trying to sell you a teapot and my, and I write it out, out of the gate, I'm like, this thing's starting at 30 euros. It's hard to get away from 30 euros after that. We just, our brains latch onto it and get stuck. Biases exist. There are lots of them. Mm -hmm. And um, as we're learning through new research, sometimes there's a new bias that suddenly becomes apparent to us that we didn't know about before. Let me throw you some headlines, Connor, that I've, that I've read recently. Sorry, Darwin. Most male mammals aren't bigger than females. Women may realize health benefits of regular exercise more than men. Patients have better outcomes with female surgeons. This is research that's putting females uh, in a better light. If, that, if those headlines had been about men, we would not have liked them as much. That's, and, and by we, I mean human beings. That's the new piece of information here. Yeah. It turns out we have all, either recently or over long periods of time, maybe we've always had it, there's a new bias out there, and it's that we like some kinds of research, mm -hmm. if they're favorable to women, and we don't like other kinds. That is exactly what we're about to hear about right now. Research showing a bias that it appears the whole world holds. Science Unscripted. All right. So, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Stewart-Williams. I am a, a professor at the University of Nottingham uh, in Malaysia. And my colleagues and I have just published a paper uh, looking at people's reactions to research on sex differences. Steve, how do people react to research on sex differences, differences between men and women? Well, reactions vary. And it depends a little bit about some of the features of the research in question. And one of the most important uh, features is whether the research in question puts men in a better light or puts women in a better light. So let's say, as I believe your experiment um, studied, let's say the research shows men in a better light than women. What, what happens? <laughs> Uh, when, when the research puts men in a better light than women, people dislike the research. They like it a lot less than when it puts woman, women in a better light. If we tell our participants that we found, uh, on average, this, we did the study, this cross-cultural study, and it found that on average women are smarter than men, they're fine with that. Um, but if, on the other hand, we reverse that, we, we flip the sexes, and we say instead that uh, the study found that men are smarter than women, they dislike that. And when I say they... Um, I mean, both sexes. Men dislike it. Women dislike it. What do you mean, Steve, that they dislike it? The reactions um, overall are much more negative toward it. So they're more likely to think that the research is poorly conducted, that it's low in quality, that the research is harmful, offensive. Uh, all these different kind of negative evaluations are boosted when it's male favoring research as opposed to female favoring research. This is a bias, right, in, in the general public? Um, it is, and it's a bias in the sense that we were very, very careful to describe the research exactly the same way, whether it was male favoring or female favoring. The only thing that we varied was whether men came off better or women came off better, otherwise identical. 
So, Steve, if there's if there's research showing that men are, and again, none of these things are true, but men are more intelligent yeah, right. or they can draw better than women or they can, in fact, multitask better than women. If there's research showing that, why would people react almost viscerally, negatively to that research? Uh, it's a good question, and we asked uh, exactly the same question of ourselves. We hypothesized and, and found evidence consistent with the idea that it's due to perceptions of harm. So p basically, people think that male-favoring research is more harmful to women than female-favoring research is to men. You said that it doesn't matter that men and women react in the same way. Um, what about... Yeah. Does it matter who did the research? What if a, a man did the research yeah. or if a, a woman did the research? That does seem to matter a little bit. So we've done three studies on that. One of them found no effect of researcher sex at all. But two of them, uh, we did find an effect of researcher sex. Uh, we had two main findings. Uh, one is that, um, and this, this is good news, people often predict that um, research conducted by women is going to be evaluated as being lower in quality. And we found no evidence at all for that. Overall, there was no difference. It didn't matter if it was a female researcher or a male researcher, which is, in, in all three of our studies, good news. Uh, what we did find, though, is that in some cases, we had some evidence that when it was research that put men in a better light, if it was a male researcher, then that research was seen, in, seen as lower in quality. Okay. So, so male-led research uh, putting men in a better light, seen as lower in quality. And the assumption there is that possibly what the, the male researcher would have had um, some sort of bias or or an uh, ulterior so, motive, yeah, to, to make exactly. to make men look exactly. great or something. Uh, it didn't happen in reverse though, and I think so. So people didn't think that female-led research that put women in a better light, they didn't see that as they, they didn't devalue that and see that in the worst light. And I think it's probably just for historical reasons and just the fact that there's been a lot more of men mistreating women throughout historically. You said that you hypothesized that the reason people had these negative per perceptions towards studies that make men look better than women in some way, um, that it was because of perceived harm to women, possibly as a, as a result of the, those findings. You, if I understood your study correct, you actually did test that. That was kind of the third part of, yep. of your experiment? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's right. So um, we basically had... Um, two conditions. So half of our participants, um, we gave them some preamble, and the preamble told them about how useful sex differences research can be, specifically for women. So it can be useful in the medical sphere. Um, it can be useful as well in turn, like for mental health reasons as well. Uh, it, it can be useful to do research and how the sexes differ in those, those areas. So it can be beneficial. That's one condition. And then the other condition was that... Um, we, we have some preamble that talked about some of the potential harms of sex differences research, how if it leads to exaggerated uh, perceptions of the differences or galvanizes stereotypes, that can have negative effects on women. When, when we kind of primed them with the idea that sex difference research can be useful, they had less of a negative reaction to the male favoring uh, findings as compared to the female favoring findings. Whereas when we uh, primed them with the idea that sex differences research can be harmful, it, it amplified the aversion to the male favoring finding. And that's consistent with the idea that perceived harm to women is a big part of why people react negatively to sex differences research and specifically male favoring sex differences research. So you told one group, hey, it's great if we talk about the, the differences between men and women, because there are some. Yep. And you told the other group, yep. it's not good to do that because it causes harm to women. Steve, which, exactly. one, which one of those statements is true? <laughs> which, is, it, is, it, is, is yeah. it good to discuss this stuff or is it not good um, to discuss those differences? I overall think that it is good to, and I, I wouldn't, you know, done research in this area, and I probably wouldn't if I thought that it was overall harmful. I think that if it's not handled carefully, though, that it can galvanize stereotypes and that kind of thing, so it can be potentially harmful. So it does need to be done carefully. So I think both of those things can be true, and the solution is just try to try to get as accurate as possible, so that you don't bolster false stereotypes. And actually, that's a big part of the reason that I think that, that we wanted to do this research is because I think it's important to see how people react to it so we can try to get it right and communicate it in a way that they don't get the wrong end of the stick in either direction. 
Steve, I'm just going to be honest. I, I think the reason we called you is yeah. because before your research came out, I had the same theory as as your research proved. I, that's my bias here. Interesting. And, 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 yeah. that's, and, and that's because I'm a science journalist and it's my job to pour over um, not every study that's published every day. There are way too many, but the ones that kind of um, that make it through to us through various channels. And there yeah. there seems to be. A, a disproportionate number of studies, this is my personal opinion, anecdotal, a disproportionate number of studies that, that champion, new, uh, sort of champion new findings that show that, I, I don't know, women, that's ridiculous, women are more capable than before, but there's something about women, um, one that comes to mind from the last week's, women only need two hours of exercise to achieve the same results as men need uh, do in five hours of exercise, where it's very, very almost proactively pro-women, Mm, um, yeah. is there a, is there a danger if the whole world wants or has a bias and, and wants research that shows that women are great and women are great, they're, they're, they're wonderful. But if, if we're swinging in that direction and that's the kind of stuff that we want and there's far less research showing that men are also wonderful people in their own way, yep. is that a danger? Uh, I think potentially it is. I mean, I think that, uh, that, that bias to the extent that it exists, and I, I do agree that it is there at least to some degree, definitely comes from a good place. Um, you know, we, we don't want to harm women, we don't want to galvanize stereotypes. We want to uh, walk away from uh, the mistreatment of women that characterizes characterize most of history. But yeah, I think I always tell my students that if we want to make the world a better place, we do need to have an accurate picture of the way the world is at the moment. Um, People people dislike it if, if there's any suggestion that we're looking at innate differences or, or, or rather differences where there's an innate contribution, partly because they think that means that that must mean it's unchangeable, partly because uh, some people think that means if, you know, if there's an innate contribution, that must mean that it's good. Neither of the, those things, I think, follow, though. Uh, the fact that something is natural in some sense doesn't imply that it's good or bad or any, anywhere in between. That's entirely for us to decide. Uh, and likewise, the fact that there's an innate contribution doesn't mean that things aren't changeable or fixable, at least to some degree. I want to make the world a better place for the people listening to this broadcast right now, Steve. And um, I, th I think one way to do that, when you, you say the word accurate, what yeah. what is the most accurate way to describe the the study that you've done for the people listening to this right now? So that when they're at their next cocktail party, how should they describe this study? Uh, they could say, I guess, um, that this, uh, this recent study came out that fi found that people tend to have an aversion to research that puts men in a better light they, than women. Uh, they tend to be wary of it and dislike it a, lo a lot more than they do identi otherwise identical research that puts women in a better light uh, than men. Uh, and that potentially points to something of a bias in the scientific literature that is understandable, but could ultimately potentially have negative effects if it um, means that we end up with a less accurate view of men and women. Steve, I'm, I'm basing this question entirely off your research. Isn't there a chance that three men talking to each other about how scientific research uh, is received far better if it shows women in a better light. Hence, we men are, you know, suffering under, under the burden of a, of a previously hidden bias. Um, aren't we, are, aren't they going to be totally skeptical about our, 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 our uh, intentions here? No, they'll, they'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> they, they might be, they might be, but, um, this is just one they... chess move in, in the in the in the overall game of proving that men are better than women, right? <laughs> <laughs> nope, no, 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 no. And I think I think getting the research right is, um, yeah, you know what? People are wary about sex differences, sex difference research, and I think that the sex difference research is exactly what's shown us that that's not true. It's exactly what's shown us that um, men are not superior to women. It's shown us that um, we're very, very alike in many different ways. And and I, I, I do take your point that people. Um, maybe skeptical, at least at a gut level. Hopefully, listening to the whole conversation, they will be less skeptical and, and think that maybe we've got a point. And I do think that ultimately it shouldn't matter who's saying it. It should be about the quality of the arguments and the quality of the evidence that we're talking about. 
That was Steve Stewart Williams speaking to us from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Yeah. And a really important topic. Again, I think if you're if you can zoom out all the way to actual objectivity, the idea behind scientific papers coming out with text on them in front of our eyes is to give us as Steve said, a real a real picture of the world and hmm. I was going to say how we fit into it. That's not the purpose of, of scientific research. It's looking at everything, but it should be fact based and it should hopefully circumnavigate our biases or we should be aware enough of our biases to be able to look at all of that objective evidence um, as what it is. I mean, I guess I can understand where the biases come from. I remember back in uh, at the turn of the century. Around the year 2000. Wait, which century? How long have you been around? Uh, around the year 2000, I had a girlfriend named Leah Martins, and we were fighting. Uh, we got into a huge argument one day. Who was better, men or, or girls or boys? And I, are, are we still there? Is that where all this comes from, that we think that our sex is better than the other one? Uh, it's possibly, yeah, connected to that. I think what's what Steve... <laughs> was trying to say is that it 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 may be connected to our human history of gender relations and the un the unfairness that has been going the oppression yeah. yeah and that and that it is it kind of shakes you a bit if there's scientific research that that comes out that somehow fits into that old outdated narrative mm -hmm. and the hard thing to accept is well what if, what un, that's very understandable and a very generous way to try to understand the world but what if that what if that fact was actually a fact mm -hmm. And that's that's hard sometimes. Yeah, is the, is the question is it, is it the job of science to to correct that, or or I, to? I, uh... I think we've done our job here. Honestly, <laughs> I think I think the idea is to let all of you out there know that you're probably doing this too, whether or not you knew it. Yeah. You you're you're happy to see or to hear Gaben, uh, Gaben and I talk about research that presents women favorably, favorably, and that if we're talking about men, uh, research that shows them. As, as in a favorable position, that, that's not going to make you as happy. And that's a fact, yeah. apparently. Be aware of that. Be, yeah. And let us know how that makes you feel. Because that's what, that's, what <laughs> yeah. turns up, that's what presses our buttons over here. Yeah, hopefully not angry. Although I think our listeners now know how to deal with that a little better. <laughs> Just breathe. Just breathe. And email us, su at dw.com. Bye. Bye. DW. Made for Minds.